Um, hello, everyone. Hello. Amen. Um, okay, so tonight's talk, we're going to um, talk to you about a lot of the products that we create for USA Today um, and also uh, USA Today's parent company, Gannett. Um, you'll notice throughout the theme of the talk, it's back to the future themed. Um, it plays into a lot of different sort of aspects of what we're going to talk about, one of which we're jumping around timelines a little bit, um, but also, if you don't know, tomorrow is October 21st, which is the 30th anniversary of when they actually traveled in time. Uh, to 2015. Um, and at USA Today, we're, it's kind of a big deal for us. So in Back to the Future 2, there's a lot of USA Today references. There's the newspaper they're holding. There's a, a drone capturing, uh, capturing, catching photos of some, some things going on in the Hill Valley. So you'll see that throughout, and we'll, we'll make it all tie in. Great. Um, Eamon Bork, Bork, excuse me, and, <laughs> <laughs> and Scott Stein. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about where we're going and um, uh, where we've been. This conversation starts back in September of um, 2011, about a year before the 30th anniversary of USA Today. And we decided that we would um, revisit the entire brand and design architecture of USA Today, um, starting with the logotype, the print edition, and all of our digital products. And, um, we identified pretty early on four things that would be important to all of this, um, four things that would be customer facing. One would be that we would really double down and renew our focus on news. Many national news organizations, many news organizations, many media companies focus on um, the news, lifestyle, um, content, how-to and other things, but really the heart and soul of USA Today is telling the nation's story. So. Uh, doubling down on news, how we told that story of what was happening across the country to our audience, how we engaged with them, um, the role of user-generated content and what we were doing. And um, in the process, we thought that we might try and um, reinvent digital advertising. So in the course of this conversation, we'll talk about where we were successful, where we weren't, where we've iterated on what we set out to do um, originally, and um, where we're going. So this is um, usatoday.com pre-2012, or 2011, early 2012. Um, I mean, as you can see, it's kind of an outdated site at the time. That was something that we really wanted to uh, really take on and redesign and reconfigure and re-architect. Um, this was actually right before our uh, beta launch into the, the new design. Um, we have over 3,000 journalists throughout the company that would um, populate content on this site um, through our back-end system we'll get into a little bit later. Um, but we realized, as we looked back on these things, um, Really not much has changed in the functionality of what we present to our, our customers and our users. Um, if you look at the new site, oh, whoops, there we are. Although it looks much better and the overall experience on the site is a lot better, it serves the same purpose. Um, on top of that, we've figured out better ways to package content um, in sort of our different flexible hero modules. Um, we've kept sort of a headline stack in the top right corner because those actually outperform a lot of the image grid and headline combinations. Um, but overall, it's pretty much the same functionality as a site from five years ago, which is kind of a testament to the actual architecture and layout of our original site. Um, it's probably worth mentioning that Originally, we worked with uh, Fantasy Interactive, FI, here in New York City, um, to come up with uh, the overall design and architecture of the original launch of this, which is slightly different. Um, it had a you know, big blue suspender on the left-hand side. This is our home front, which we, want, we wanted to build a variation off of from our news front um, for certain delivery of content reasons. Yeah, and although um, most of our approach to um, redesigning our desktop site, in fact, all of our products is not, and let me emphasize, is not responsive. Um, we deliver a separate code base for each of the platforms that we serve um, because we think that's faster and more efficient. Um, our homepage is responsive, and the changes that we made um, to this subsequent to our initial launch in September allowed us, for example, to take advantage of larger display areas um, for, at the time, the approximately 25 to 30% 30, 30 of our audience who had more viewable area. But it was important 
for both our editors, who are trying again to tell the story of um, what's happening across the country on any given day, at any given moment in that day, that we not lose content. So this is the one portion of the site that is highly responsive, and things shift around on the page. Some things disappear um, and are not presented graphically. They show up as headlines, but all the content is there, so um, nothing is lost. One other just quick brand attribute that we carry over from our print edition is top left corner, we have what we call a live logo, and that changes daily. On the website, it changes based on um, a couple factors, but mostly the top story of the day or top topic of the day, and then there's a graphic that's sort of embedded into our logo. Um, on the, in the print edition, obviously that happens once a day, but there's always like really cool little logos, top left corner of the top masthead to kind of represent the, the big topic of that day. Right. So after the um, launch of the, the redesign in 2012, that was sort of a big um, focus point on digital products for USA Today. That's when we decided to uh, really push the design and UX and just um, overall experience inside of all of our, our, our mobile apps. Um, the desktop kind of kicked off with this unique and sort of, uh, I guess, groundbreaking design. So it was kind of time to match up as best we could our mobile products to that that really great design that launched in 2012. Um, so back then we actually uh, went into redesigning all of our mobile products. So iPad, iPhone, Android phone, Android tablet. Um, we had some sort of one-off Windows products back then too as well. Um, the only issue is that the way we worked back then was we all sort of worked on product specific things. So I was the iPad app designer, someone else was the iPhone designer, um, and et cetera. So what ended up happening is we had sort of this fractured experience throughout our products, um, visually, um, through the diff different motion graphics, different transitions, a lot of things that could be kind of taken as brand assets that should relate to each other throughout our products, we actually didn't have. Um, we focused more. I guess more so on each platform's individual uh, OS level designs. Um, at the time, a lot of iPad apps were focusing around sort of a newspaper layout. Um, you know, Android is very specific with their audience about navigation structures and certain things. For uh, back then, it might have been KitKat, uh, the operating system. Um, and then iPhone was, you know, we have the ability to change from a dark to a light um, experience inside the app. So there's a lot of different things going on. Um, which we want to change. Um, so moving to the future, we've come up with a design that we think sort of takes on all the things that uh, were the problems of the, the previous um, editions of our apps. Um, these are actually not released yet. They're going to be releasing probably late December, so you're getting kind of a sneak peek. Um, so don't take any pictures. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the, one of the, the main focuses around this design was to uh, increase the flexibility of our app, not necessarily just being able to span across, um, you know, 100 different news companies throughout Gannett, who owns USA Today, because um, they'll also be using this template, um, but also around advertising, um, around content packaging, um, and around interaction. Um, next slide. Uh, one big thing that we noticed in our current iPad app is Really, once you get past the first screen of this newspaper layout, this sort of um, newspaper remnant look to our app, is that users tend to get a little lost. They don't exactly know where they are in the app. They think like, oh, this looks exactly like just you know one, one thumb sc uh, scroll up above it. Um, so we wanted to have these sort of visual breakups to kind of um, give users a sense of how they're navigating through the app and focus them one template at a time. Um, so we're actually basically snapping grid to grid um, throughout the app. In, the, um, in, uh, in tablet for, for, uh, for iPad, and then for phone, it's actually a fluid scroll. Yeah. We were chatting with one of the other presenters earlier, and um, for those of you who know USA Today is a, um, and first experienced it as a, is a print product, simplicity and compactness are brand attributes for us, things that our customers tell us they really value. So translating that um, into these digital products is an important part of the experience um, for us, and we really strive to do it across all of our platforms. So this is uh, our article page in iPad. Um, we wanted to show you guys this, just kind of reinforce the fact that uh, a, a big part of what we, we try to focus around when we design for our apps is visual storytelling. Um, so we went kind of full width with these large images. This area could be you know, a top um, 
primary asset for a video, for an inline gallery, for an embedded um, O-embed social media uh, piece. Um, this is another sort of example of inline video. Uh, inline gallery where you can actually swipe through and interact with the images right there on the page instead of being taken to a, a separate browser window or an in-app browser or something that pops up on top. And then a big effort was um, including social media o embeds, so anything from Twitter to YouTube to Instagram, um, just sort of enhancing our editorial staff to be able to tell that story from all different perspectives, um, from non-news people to people on the scene in Ukraine or Syria or wherever they may be. Right. And so um, I mentioned at the beginning of our um, talk that one of our goals was to rethink how we incorporated content that's created by other people, user-generated content. And we weren't able to get that work done at the time of the launch. We had a team that was working on it after the launch. But what, in fact, has happened is that we've been lapped by what's happening on all of the social media platforms. And while we get lovely contributions from our own user-generated content platform, most of the stuff that we look for to really illustrate the story of what's happening around the country or around the world now comes to us from other platforms. So it became quite important for us to be able to um, source that stuff, get rights to use it, and publish it to our stories to help illustrate them, and then to make sure that those assets um, are viewable across all of the platforms so that it's not incomplete anywhere. And um, Eamon mentioned O-Embed. That's the standard that we use to um, embed things like tweets, YouTube, Vimeo, and a variety of other content that comes from other sources. So this is just an example of um, how our design scales from tablet to phone, for, uh, from iPad to iPhone. Um, again, sort of the, the flexibility aspect of it. Um, this template approach will be actually span across over 100 different um, news outlets throughout Gannett. Um, so the idea was to really have something that's both flexible from a brand perspective, uh, from a content perspective, um, and just uh, something to have a consistent user experience throughout, um, whether that's transitions or the visual brand uh, experience. Um, and really, uh, one tough thing that we always kind of have to deal with when creating Designing these fronts for mobile products is the variety of types of content that come through. So it can be a video with just a headline and no description. It could be a gallery with um, a one-word description and a two-word headline. Um, so there's, there's all these different, different uh, things we have to balance when we're thinking about how to lay out a front grid, whether it's on an iPad or an iPhone. Phone being a little bit easier because it's this sort of one-directional space where things can grow and shorten very easily, but on an iPad, it gets a little bit tougher because you can break a grid or you can sort of have this odd sort of mixed matched um, unleveled aspect to a, to a design. So that was a big part of our design effort. Um, this is an example of our navigation structure. So depending on the platform you're on, you'll have sort of that OS level standard navigation structure. For, for iPhone, we have a main left, top left uh, hamburger kind of main drawer and then also subsections on the top right. Um, that was something we learned through user testing on iOS products versus Android products. Um, Android users um, typically wanted to stick to that, the Android style, everything is in the left drawer, things collapse and open in that left drawer to, so, to show subsections um, and other sort of features in a navigation. Or on iOS, we learned that our users actually would like to um, have subsections set in a page. We found that they were constantly looking for the scores section on the sports front and not in the navigation, so things of that nature. Uh, next up is Apple Watch, which is actually out now. Um, this got sort of pushed to the forefront of our project. Um, again, just tying back that brand and that co continuity through um, all of our products. Um, Apple Watch launched back in February, I'd say? With the product launch. Yep, uh, back in February of this year. Um, it's been really successful. We've got a lot of really great reviews through you know, the App Store and user feedback. Um, it was a really great project to work on. We were one of the first um, news products in the Apple Watch sort of system. We had to go out to Apple and work with them and see the Apple Watch before anybody else saw it and work with it, uh, which is really fun. And then this is our Windows 10 product. So again, it spans across iOS, Android, wearable, Windows 10. Um, and this actually goes across tablet, phone, the watch, um, and then also Xbox as well, which is really cool. And I forgot to mention that Apple TV 2 will have a USA Today app as well that kind of falls in line with this design as well. Um, and then Android. 
an Android version. So um, all of these you're seeing, uh, they, they maintain somewhat of their own operating system level um, unique designs, but also kind of uphold that USA Today brand that we want to have consistent throughout. So back to the future, hope, hope you get that. Um, so from a usability perspective, uh, what do we do to kind of figure out what our users want? Are they using our products correctly? Um, so we have existing apps out there already. Um, and we kind of have, uh, we use a, a company called usertest.com and they basically can pool a bunch of people who are existing users, non-users, any gender, any age, any demographic, which is really great. Um, to kind of run moderated or unmoderated or baseline testing, A-B testing. Um, so for like this redesign effort, we basically started with um, uh, an initial baseline test of our current products to see what users' expectations were. And we learned quite a few things. I mean, um, basically users scan headlines or our users scan headlines and images are sort of the secondary um, uh, thing they're looking for. Uh, we learned that they, tend to graze off a of front, so they're tapping into a story, reading a story, or reading half a story or whatever, and then backing out. They're not swiping through stories, which would get you from the first to the second to the third. They're actually going back and looking at what they, picking what they want to look at next. We call them grazers. Um, and then you know, after that baseline testing, we kind of came up with some wireframes and some designs and um, things that we would um, retest for usability testing and see if it was actually functional and able to work. Um, if you notice in the few slides back on iPad and even on iPhone and Android as well, there's a top carousel, and that was um, like our top five section. Uh, carousels are usually like the death of content on websites. People are always saying like, don't use a carousel. Um, but we actually learned that users are interacting and discovering those top five pieces in that carousel more so than we think they would on the original iPad app that had them laid out in one uh, screen because they're actually swiping through and reading each one, that interaction was actually really appealing to them. I'd say, I think it was 90% of all our uh, test subjects got that and swiped through that and were like, this is great, this is top stories, I get it. So there was a, a sense of hierarchy that was brought on by that that um, we didn't expect them to kind of immediately understand and they actually did. So. Yeah. Yeah, and a sort of comment about that, when we showed these designs to the um, editorial staff, they actually believed that um, our customers would hate this feature and they would never engage with it and they wouldn't believe it until we ran more than half a dozen user tests on several platforms and validated that in fact not only did people use it, but they dug it. So um, it turns out that um, Clearly, we don't know any, everything in any one part of our company and that our customers can surprise us. Um, we just need to um, ask them and pay attention to what they say and sometimes they will lead us somewhere um, new. Right. Um, so um, going back very briefly to 2011, again in the spirit of our Back to the Future theme, um, when we set out to do this whole thing, um, we were not only doing it for USA Today, which is a big brand with lots of people working on it, but at the time we had 80 at Gannett. Gannett is subsequently split into two publicly traded companies. Um, at the time we had um, 80 plus local news sites. We had USA Today as a national news site. We had approximately 30 television stations and we had another bunch of businesses. All of these people, um, and this was the vision, would um, share this new platform. And so we had to build a new platform and the new CMS for them, not simply as a, um, as a um, way to squeeze efficiencies or create efficiencies in the business, although that's very nice and makes the people in finance and the executive team happy when we can do things more efficiently and for less money. But the vision was that we would operate as one newsroom and so these 3,000 people that Eamon mentioned could all create and share content so that when an important news story was taking place in any part of the country where we had a um, bureau, we could source content and share it across the network. It also meant that in some places like my in-law's hometown in Wausau, Wisconsin where we op operate a um, local newspaper, um, they just have a smaller team and so presenting, um, providing them with a set of templates that 
make perfect sense for USA Today, might not make perfect sense for them. So the design solution needs to scale and work for places that have fewer people, fewer resources, and less access, say, to the big images that you've seen in a lot of um, these products so far. Um, these happen to be a few of the um, larger sites in the Gannett portfolio. Right, um, the shark still looks fake. So I mentioned that um, we didn't succeed as we hoped in the UGC department. Another place where we got ambitious and I think got ahead of ourselves in the marketplace was with advertising. Um, we imagined boldly that we could create new ad types that advertisers would embrace. So we came up with all kinds of luscious full canvas um, units that were more magazine-like. Well, it turns out that it's more expensive for advertisers and their agencies to make a piece of creative that they can only run in one place, no matter how beautiful um, and seductive it is. And so we weren't so foolish as to rely entirely on that. We have a bunch of IAB standard units as well and things like pre-roll and other things. But we thought it would create a better experience for our customers and for advertisers if, in fact, as people move through the experience, they would see these full canvas ads rather than a bunch of things in the right rail. Not so successful in that department, although we continue to create custom work for many of our advertisers, and some have embraced this. But the uh, one new idea that was developed subsequent to the um, launch and is much in the spirit of this sort of full canvas approach is this thing that we call Gravity, which is a full canvas video unit and an advertiser um, can create a Gravity ad as quickly as they can post a video to YouTube. And um, this was developed entirely internally um, and we're really proud of it and it works on desktop and it works on our native mobile applications and as long as we um, tend to feature and we strive to feature really great looking content in here, in this unit, it's a welcome experience, at least for um, some of our uh, customers. And just on advertising real quick, um, for the IAB approach, I mean, we use 300 by 250s, 300 by 600, sort of those poster ad sizes. Um, they present a challenge when you're designing sort of a, a grid layout for you know, 40 to 50 different news stories on a front. Um, it kind of starts to dictate your design a little bit, so you always have to be really careful about not letting that get to that point with an IAB ad. So that's the really great thing about these gravity ads and these sort of more beautiful interactive ads that we've created is that they are full screen takeovers and they tend to be, um, as soon as you enter the app, they're, they're sort of um, like, kind of like transitioned in and faded in and it's a really nice effect. Um, and the user can just go to clear it away and, or interact with it or buy movie tickets or um, really whatever it takes. Um, so it actually frees up some creativity in our design. Um, so I'd really love to see a lot of things moving in this direction moving forward with both native and desktop and even mobile web. All right, so we're winding it down. Um, we've talked about our customers um, and we're just gonna kind of cruise through to make one last point that um, our business, like for um, many other of the publishers here in the audience, has changed. When we undertook this project back in 2011, um, our desktop audience dominated. Um, our audience has grown substantially in um, that time. We have 100 million uniques, according to Comscore, across Gannett. USA Today does more than a billion page views a month, but how people come to us, when they come to us, all of that has changed. And so it's incumbent on us and these new designs that we're working on to think about how we welcome them to the site, how we serve them, and um, how we um, encourage them either to visit us again or to view another piece of content while they're on the site. But mostly we want them to have a really great experience so that they'll um, come back again. So thank you. Thank you. And just one quick thing, uh, we are hiring, so if you go to gannett.com slash careers, we're hiring, you know, designers, UX designers, developers, et cetera. That's our, that's <laughs> that's our shameless pitch. Well, so uh, let's do uh, probably time for two quick questions, but one for me. So I remember the, the redesign when it came out, um, everyone's mind was blown. It was one of the most forward-looking redesigns of a media property anyone had seen. But then two years later, all of a sudden, it's no longer the new thing. So, 
you know, how do you guys think about like how often do you do a major redesign in order to stay current? Does that keep you up at night? You yeah. Know, talk but did that. you just speak to our head of sales this week? Because he asked me the same question. <laughs> I've already started redesigning the site, but they won't let me do anything with it. Yeah. So. Um, so the um, question is that it, I think the answer to the question is that it's a rolling process um, for us, and we are focused on um, mobile web and our native. Um, mobile applications right now, um, and there's a um, kind of a book of work against the, the desktop site. There are a bunch of things that haven't changed in the course of the last three years, and that is um, our focus on, on news and our focus on um, storytelling. So I think th in some ways the tension on the desktop experience at this point is that um, we're seeing many more people enter on the story level, and what I say to um, my colleagues at this point is the sort of the story is the new homepage, and we have to think about how we um, create a new experience with that orientation. Don't get me wrong, the homepage is still really important, but it's this like story first is the starting point, is the thing that we're thinking about for the desktop experience. At the same time, we're constantly sort of monitoring metrics and analytics from all of our section fronts, um, iterating on small things here and there. Um, Scott kind of mentioned it, but a new article page rolling out soon because the article page is the new home page, and that's where we're going to grab people to get to the next story that catches their eye, or you know, we're going we're to surface OMBED items that make them click into another USA Today product or something like that. So. Um, yeah, we're constantly monitoring, changing, iterating on what's existing, so. Cool, time for a question? What about other media, like uh, now video is getting really popular. A lot of people, they're browsing the web, they're just watching videos all the time. Do you guys have any like new designs for videos or new ideas, maybe to make them interactive? And then what about virtual reality that's coming out? Do you have ideas? Yeah, so we, we're actually um, full steam ahead on virtual reality. We have a whole department dedicated to really figuring out how our content can play in that space, whether it's reading an article, watching a video, browsing through a gallery, um, really trying to figure out how our stuff fits in the, the virtual reality world. Um, we have a guy working in Oculus, in the HTC headset, uh, Vive, all kinds of stuff. He's actually, there's an event this week in New York City where he'll be at speaking. Um, for the video aspect, I mean, video is um, a very prominent part of content for us. Um, we're continually figuring out ways how to uh, have users engage inside of our video player, um, on fronts, on articles, on embedded inline uh, video assets. Um, and really, we're, we're con it feels like we're constantly trying to drive more and more people to video. Uh, we've actually learned on mobile testing that users, um, it really depends on the situation, but they often don't like getting video on a, on a phone or even on a tablet um, as much as reading an article or an article that has those those pieces embedded in it um, so they can pick and choose what they want to do. I think you know the fact that operating system let sometimes auto play videos when you open them to a, a full screen um, native player is a, a part of like users not wanting to have it on a mobile phone. Maybe they're sitting in a, a meeting and watching a video when they're not supposed to be or, you know, so it depends on the, the products and the audience for that, but I think video is a big push for us, so. Yeah, growing, and it's something we need to honestly get better at, um, better at making. Um, when we serve video on our site versus when we serve video on um, some over-the-top platforms, we've learned that we need to make different kinds of content. And also, audio has been a really interesting area of growth for us over the last year, and I'm personally quite interested in hands-free experiences. Um, so that's an area where we're um, making new kinds of content and experimenting as well. And our VR team is um, focusing a lot on 360 video too. So, awesome! I think uh, I think we'll have to call. But you guys okay. are gonna be hanging out. Um, yeah. Thanks yep. to both of you. Thank you. Yeah.